Good morning, face and family. You are probably not expecting to see me here, but here I am. I just want to share uh, a word with you, testimony of God's faithfulness in spite of our lack of faith. So I want us to turn our attention to uh, the chaplain team. Uh, the theme this week is a step of faith. And we're looking at Matthew 14, Matthew 14. So I'm going to flip in my Bible to Matthew 14, and the passage is 22 through 33. So you guys have probably already looked through and heard from the other pastors about this passage, but I want you to hear a, a small piece of what the Lord is showing me uh, in this and I want you to turn uh, your attention to when, uh, so, so this is what's happened, okay? So in, in uh, 14, John the Baptist was just beheaded. He was just killed. And Jesus got word of that uh, right about when he's going out to, uh, to share. Uh, or he saw a group of people. They came to him. Uh, he had just gotten word John the Baptist got killed. And he was praying, he was by himself, and a crowd came, and he had pity on them and started to heal the sick. So the disciples are like, hey, you know, you got a big crowd, and um, they need to eat, we need to eat, so let's go eat. And Jesus says, well, let's feed them. And they're like, well, we only have, you know, two loaves and three fish and two loaves or something like that. Not enough. <laughs> Jesus says, no, well, let, let's feed them. So, you know, they feed the crowds with this tiny amount of food, 5,000 people. And then now uh, Jesus says, you guys go out in the boat. You know, I'm going to, I need some time alone. So they go out in the boat and they're way out into the sea uh, without Jesus. And uh, right about that time, uh, the, the, the wind is getting really strong. So they're, trying, they're on the boat. They're trying to go a certain direction. The wind is against them. So uh, we know the story, right? So Jesus walks out onto the water. Uh, it's, it's dark, but they see the, the, Jesus' uh, image. They don't know what it is. They think it's a ghost. Now, <laughs> uh, it had to have been scary, to be honest. When I was uh, living in Nashville, Tennessee, this was right when Grace was born, uh, we had a dog, and our dog's name was Denver. Denver was this shiny, gray, beautiful, uh, shiny dog. And, and uh, Weimaraner, yeah, try to say that word, Weimaraner. So Weimaraner dogs are beautiful, and they're big, and they're very fast, and uh, when you see them at night, they're very scary looking because they literally look like a ghost. When they run and you don't see them and they just come across your path, it looks like a, a ghost. And they call them ghost dogs because of that. So I imagine one, one night when we went out, I had let Denver off leash uh, and there were several people in the park. And I was like, oh, no. And sure enough, Denver had run all the way around, and there was a group of maybe eight or 12 people kind of sitting around in a circle in the park and, and, at night, and I knew exactly where Denver was because they all screamed at the same time. I mean, like they saw a ghost. <laughs> and it was Denver, of course. So they freaked out. They're all running off. And so I think of that when I think of this passage for a moment, because when they saw Jesus... It was worse than that. I mean, they had nowhere to go, right? They're in a storm, and there's this patch of white, and they can't see it, and, and they're so afraid. Jesus has to say, hey, take heart. It's me. Don't be afraid. And Peter, being the man of faith, right, he, uh, you know, it's interesting because we know that when he walks out and, Jesus, and Peter begins to fall into the water, Jesus, you know, Peter says, hey, Jesus, if you are who you are, if you're, then command me to come walk on the water. Now, let me ask you something. Does that sound like little faith to you? No one has ever walked on water. 
And Peter's like, command me to walk on water. And Jesus says, come. And Peter walks on water. So he walks on the water. He's walking out to Jesus in faith. And so suddenly the wind stirs up or he begins to see the wind again. And he starts to look around and the wind is blowing. So it says here, so Peter answered him, Lord, if you command me to come, uh, if, if you, uh, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. And he said, come. So Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water and came to Jesus. I don't think that's little faith in my definition. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and beginning to sink, he cried out, save me, Lord. So he began to see the wind. So Jesus immediately reached out to him, took a hold of him, saying to him, oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? All right. So interesting thing here is Jesus didn't say, oh, you of no faith. He said little faith. So as I look at this, what I see is the little faith got him there, but it takes more faith in Christ to get you through it. Let me give you some personal examples. When my wife and I uh, were dating, uh, I was afraid to death of getting married. I was scared. And it really took a lot of faith to trust that Jesus was saying, she's the one, she's the one, and I'm going to take you. I'm going to get you there, and I'm going to get you through it. So it took me faith to get into the marriage. But when marriage got really hard within the first year and a half, two years, that's when it takes a lot of faith. So little faith, I define as this, looking to Jesus to get us there, but not enough to walk us through it. So, yeah, I, I had enough faith to get into the marriage, but I was so afraid, and I literally had divorce papers this thick because I didn't know how to walk through it. And so it was our church that came alongside us, and it was the counseling, and it was the people that loved us through it. And it, was, and it was Jesus that showed up in our marriage and walked us through the most difficult time at that point in my entire life, and probably to this day. And so that's why we called our, our daughter Grace, because of the grace of God. Now, little faith got me into the marriage, but it took more faith for Jesus to walk me and my wife through the storm of the faith. Uh, of the marriage. So I had to stop looking at all the wrong things that were happening in the marriage and I had to refocus on Jesus. I had to look at him. Because if I looked at anything else, I would start to sink and I would sink immediately. Let me give you another example. When we started our ballroom dance company, we moved to Arizona. It took a lot of faith. It took quite a bit of faith to get started. We had a little bit of money. We did it anyway, and we became somewhat successful. So I was all believing in Jesus. Oh, yes, Lord, you're so good. We're making money. Things are good. And then a storm came, literally a storm. It came in. It flooded our whole entire studio, and we did not have flood rider insurance, and that means the insurance was not going to cover the flood. We lost $380,000. Shortly after that, we lost two employees to death. It took so much more faith to walk through the storm than it did to open the company. So we started the company that took faith. God getting us through that storm is a completely different level. And that's where Jesus is saying, oh, you have little faith. Don't look at the storm. Look at me. So, God brought you into this world. 
And this world is a world of storms. You will walk through situations where you're like, oh my goodness, everything is good. God is good. Uh, uh, I've got plenty of money. We have plenty of this, plenty of that. And then there can be another time, another season where God walks you through a storm. But the question is, are you going to look at the storm or are we going to look at Jesus? So uh, what do all these three different things have in common? One is my marriage, my company, and the last one, let me, let me say this, moving back to Korea, yeah, it took faith to move back to Korea. I didn't want to move back to Korea a year and a half ago. That took faith. I was like, we're good. Grace and Ethan, they're in sports, they're loving school, and then I realized it's going to take a lot of faith to move to Korea because I didn't want to come, but God kept telling us it's time to go. And when we look at that storm, we had to look at Jesus. I had to look at him to get us here and to get us through it. Our time is about to wrap, so I want to finish by saying this. What do all three of these scenarios have in common? Meaning, my marriage, uh, starting the company, moving to Korea. What, what is in common is that Jesus is king of it all. So Peter had to look back to Jesus because Jesus is the king of the wind. He's the king of the storm. He is the king of the ocean. He's the one that spoke the ocean and the waters and the lakes into existence. So where better to look than the very one that created it? You created this stuff. You can stop it. You created it. You can walk me through it. You created it. You can walk me across it. And so that being said, what storm... Has God given you the faith to get into? And what, how are you going to get through the storm is to look back at the author and the finisher of your faith. Ask Jesus for the faith to walk through it and look to him. Your storm could literally be right now the test that you're about to take next, next session. It could be the AP test that's in May. It could be your storm, it might, to us, you know, to an adult, oh, that's a little storm. It's not a little storm to you. And Jesus is getting you ready for that storm so that you're ready for other storms for his kingdom. The same way he's going to get you through your studies is the same way he's going to get you through your marriage, looking to him. He is the author. He is the finisher of your faith. So what can you give back to him? Not give back to him. What, what situation? Stop looking at the teacher. Stop looking at the studies. Stop looking at, oh, my dad isn't here for me. My mom should have been nicer. Look to Jesus, and he will give you the words. Look to Jesus, and he will give you the mindset to study the way you need to study. The last is the last time I looked, thought about water, it was when Moses and the Israelites made it through the Red Sea. They were looking to Jesus. They were looking to God to get them through the Red Sea. But the others, uh, Pharaoh was looking to what? He was looking to pursue his own thing, and that was to take down his enemy. Jesus says, look to me. The very water that God saved them from is the water that he used to cover up the enemy. God is not your enemy. You are not his enemy. Look to him and he will walk you through the storm. Let's pray. Jesus, give us the faith to not have little faith, but to have great faith in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, guys. Have an awesome day in Jesus' name. Goodbye.